see St. George is um, a project coordinator at the district's fantastic um, Workability One program, which works with uh, high school students at both Los Gatos and Saratoga and helping them with job placement. She does quite a bit of other things as well, but that's the capacity that we're, uh, she's here in tonight. So I'm gonna hand this over to have her explain a little bit more. Thank you, everyone. I wanted to thank you again for, you, for all of you to be here tonight. I know you're all very busy, and thank you for choosing this event tonight in your lives. Um, I'm the coordinator of Workability, and I have one coworker, Marina Barnes, who's in the audience tonight. And we are a very small group, and we serve our district, and we work with students that are in special education that have individual education plans, and we help students get jobs and transition to college. And one of the things that we usually do with students that are transitioning, um, transitioning to community college, that's one of the things that we help them with, but many other things, as you will see tonight, and on the handout that's bit. Um, there's many options for students. Um, the handout's called Paths and Possibilities, so there's not just one way to do things when you leave high school, and that's what we'd like to focus on tonight. Um, through our collaboration with my program, Workability, and Parent Continuum, we were hoping to reach a nice wider audience, so we're really happy to see all of you here. Um, so, the Parenting Continuum, uh, I didn't mention the website, is uh, parentingcontinuum.org, just so you know. Um, and uh, one of the things that we as an organization try to do is make sure that we always um, take into account the Project Cornerstone assets and that we host events that are taking into account assets that, um, that we are hoping to develop in the children in our, our district to help them become um, successful, happy adults in life. And so this particular event is, I'm gonna read this so that I get them, get them right. Um, tonight's program will be focusing on assets, um, four particular assets. Pursuing productive activities, positive view of their personal future, personal power, oh, it's fine, self-esteem and a sense of purpose. So through the, the talk and the sharing that our panelists are gonna do tonight, they're gonna talk about how they developed those assets in themselves. Don't worry, you don't have to reference any of them. It's just going to happen by the things that you're sharing. But um, we were hoping to um, advance advance those assets in this process. And um, let's see, Christy will be introducing each of the speakers and a little bit about them in a minute. Let's see. Oh, and before I hand the, the microphone back to her, I want to point out that all of you have a handout on your chairs. And as we were planning this event, we wanted to think about who the audience was and who the panelists might be. And the framework that we created was what's here. And what this is, is an example of the kinds of resources and path options that student, students have, one, when they're in high school, things that might affect their career choices, uh, their personal development, the people that they lean on. So on the left are, um, are a list of the, the groups, the job possibilities, um, the different things that may occur in high school. And on the right are the things that students may do beyond high school. So we all know that going to a four-year university is, is one of the options. And there's a whole lot of other options. And they might include starting with work. They might include going to a community college. They might include the range of things that are listed here. So um, the, when you hear our speakers talk tonight, some of the things they say will be found on this sheet and will kind of prove as, um, as, a, as a talking point for them as well. So you have that, and you have another sheet, which I don't know is the handout. Okay, great, so. Um, Alrighty, Christy, to talk about, to introduce our speakers. Thank you, and the other sheet you have, the postcard, is information about the workability program that I'm the coordinator of, and that is a program that serves students that are in special education with IEPs, and helping them get jobs is one of the things we do help them in the transition after high school. I forgot to mention the name of the talk. Welcome to Life After High School. <laughs> With that, we'll begin our panel. Thank you for being here this talk. Thank you. Um, I don't want to say too much about the speakers. I want them to speak for themselves, and I think you would rather hear from them. So I'm going to introduce um, Kristen Hoffman, who will be our first speaker tonight, and she's going to share her story. Done. I'll come back and introduce the next person. So thank you very much. Let's give a warm welcome to Kristen. Hi, I'm Kristen. I am a Los Angeles High School graduate from 
2006, so almost 10 years ago. And this is actually my first time back on campus since then. And that speaks a little bit to my story. Um, when I graduated high school, I told myself I would never sit step foot in a classroom ever again. I hated school. I um, struggled a lot through elementary and middle school. They uh, didn't really know what to do with me most of the time. And eventually, freshman year of high school, I was tested for a learning disability. And I was put in, I got an IEP, and I was put into resource, and it was like my eyes were finally open for the first time. And I was actually learning, and I was in an environment where I could um, work with my learning disability, and I was given tools on how to work with it. And I've only built on those tools as I've gone through my education, which I'll talk about later. So even though I was finally feeling like I was learning something, I still was like traumatized from it, and I never wanted to come back to school again. I graduated, I worked at Willow Street Pizza for a long time, and I thought it was totally fine, and I would meet some rich guy, and I would never have to work, and it was probably be okay. But like two years into that plan, it wasn't, it wasn't really working out, and my mom was like, you gotta do something. So I decided to enroll at West and I just took a ceramics class, and in this class that kind of teaches you about what you might want to do with your future, you take like personality tests, and it tells you you'll do this and that. So I took those classes, and it actually felt okay. It felt good to be back in school, and when people that I saw at Willow Street that I went to school with say, oh, what are you doing now? I didn't have to just say, well, this, you know. <laughs> I could say I'm at West Valley, I'm doing this. So it felt good to, you know, be working towards something, even though I had no idea what that was. So when I went to West Valley, I actually joined their DESP program, where you can have the same resources that I did here at high school. I take my tests somewhere else, so I'm not distracted. I'm in a room by myself, completely quiet, because if I'm sitting next to someone while I'm taking a test, and they're even breathing, <laughs> breathing, I cannot concentrate. I'm like counting the respirations, I'm looking over at them, I just can't. So I'm sure some of you probably relate to that. So that really worked for me. I got extended time because I really like to focus, so I need longer time. And I, you know, started from the bottom. I took their lowest, lowest math class they had, lowest English class. I think it was even lower than they have, but it wasn't barely high school level. Um, so I took those classes and I got an A for the first time ever, and it felt so good. It was like a high. I couldn't believe like how good it felt. And so I'm like, okay, this feels really good. But here I am, you know, like 20, 21, and here my friends are graduating four-year colleges and stuff, and I'm taking, you know, middle school math. <laughs> so that didn't feel awesome, but at least I was doing it. So I slowly crept up, and I kept doing the classes, and I kept getting A's, and I kept getting A's, and it wasn't a fluke, and it felt good, and I just, like, had this thirst for knowledge, and I just loved it. I wanted to do more, but I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So I finished off those classes, just hanging out at West Valley, and then I had some health issues come up, and I was in the hospital, and I had some awesome nurses, and I had some horrible nurses, and I decided from that day that I wanted to be an awesome nurse for somebody someday, so that I wanted to be there for someone on one of the worst days of their life or best day of their life. And so I went to school like a week later, I talked to a counselor, and the next semester I enrolled in prereqs for nursing school, and I never looked back. So I did those, I applied to San Jose State's nursing program, I was accepted on my first time, and I started in 2013, and it's a three year program. And I also, at San Jose State, am in their program, it's AEC, same thing, I get to take my test somewhere else. It's quiet. I was nervous about it because nursing and learning disability don't really seem to go together. And I had told a few people that I wanted to do nursing and I could just tell the looks on their faces. They knew that the road ahead of me would be hard. But that kind of just pushed me further, you know, because I wanted to prove people wrong and maybe I had some self-doubt too and I wanted to prove myself wrong that I could do it with so many years of anxiety and self-doubt and not thinking that I was good enough or that I could do anything. So 
When I started, it wasn't a problem. I was able to take my tests other places. I didn't feel judged. I told my teachers every semester what was going on. I was up front, and I didn't let it hold me back. And I actually used my learning disability to my advantage. It's because I'm more conscious of it, so I feel like I'm more detail-oriented because of it. I write everything down. I remember small, minuscule details that not everybody does, but it works for me. So I'm in nursing school now. I'm actually graduating in December. So, yeah. I have a full ride scholarship. It is the largest scholarship given at San Jose State besides a sports scholarship. So that's awesome. It has paid my way through school. I will be graduating with absolutely no debt. And I did fairly <laughs> well. And so yeah, I'll be graduating in December. I'm doing my preceptorship right now in labor and delivery, where I've really found my home. And like I said, best day of people's lives. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I welcomed some babies into the world last night, and it's never gets old, it feels so good, and I'm um, going to be applying for the Lucille Packard Persant program, which is a new graduate program where they cross-train you between labor and delivery or NICU or pediatrics, wherever you want to be. So I'm applying for that, so fingers crossed, it's really competitive. So yeah, graduating with, and I'm graduating in magna cum laude.
when, when I was uh, 23, I think, 22 or 23, I, I, I realized that, because I, I, I was actually a graphic designer. I, I worked for Tina Turner. Does anybody? You guys might be a little too young, some of you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, 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 I realized that as a graphic designer, you know, I was very good at it, but I was just kind of just alone in my studio, dressed in black, chain smoking on the computer with no social interaction. It was kind of starting to get depressing, and I really didn't like San Francisco, and, and I, I just missed what I was doing when I was home, working in what I do now. And so I just quit, and I made it into a career for myself, and I have been very successful, and it's, it's worked out really well for me. I'm not advocating that you drop out of college as soon as you find a job that you like um, that pays more than Starbucks, but in, in, in some cases it can work out. I, I, I do think that I'm one of them. Um, I, if I had it to do all over again, I probably would have stuck around and graduated because I was kind of close. Um, so, but I'm, I'm still successful. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I know that I know it was your first time speaking. You, you did a good job. You got through. You got, you got your story across. And it's good to tell this story. It's very important because not everybody fits in the same box. And that's the whole point of tonight, really, is finding your way. And it may take a while. And it may go this way, and then you may go that way. And it may, you may start later, um, figure it out. And so that's why I invited different people to come and talk tonight. So they all have very, very different stories to tell you and explain where, where they're coming from. And it's all good. Yes. yes. So I just want to say that. And so thank you very much again, Joy. So our next speaker will speak tonight is Sarah, Sarah O'Donnell. And she's also, this happens to be, another high school graduate from this high school. Um, and she's going to share her story tonight, too. So let's give Sarah more of Okay, so I graduated in 2012, so not too long ago, and I'm still going through school. <laughs> uh, okay, so my story starts in high school, actually. Um, I was a water polo and uh, on the swim team as well, um, but I tore my labrum in my shoulder my sophomore year, um, and so my goal was to go to University of the Pacific in Stockton, play water polo, and also get my degree. Well, my desire and goal of playing water polo was completely canceled when I had to get surgery. Um, so I had to find a new path. And so junior year, I started painting um, for two different families, and I absolutely loved it. And from then on, I'm actually still manning Nanny. Do you want me to use that one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I nanny for two different families still. Um, so I've been with them for about four and a half years. Um, and what my path was is I applied to four years when I was a senior in high school and I got into almost everywhere I applied. Um, but my parents weren't paying for college. Um, I had to pay for it completely myself. So I applied to scholarships here, and luckily I got a lot of them. Um, so I was able to pay for school, but I went to West Valley, kicking and screaming. Literally my mom had to drag me out of bed the first day of school because I didn't want to go. Um, I was mad because I was the last guy graduate. You're supposed to go to a four year, You're spo your parents are supposed to be able to pay for four year colleges, but that wasn't my situation. Um, and I had to become okay with that. Um, but that was very, very, very difficult when I had parents and students and friends that were like, why are you going to West Valley? That's for students that only get C's or are plunking out of school. Um, and I got really frustrated with those comments. But once I got to West Valley, I realized that it was the place that I needed to be. Um, I know I love kids and I know I'm going to work with them in the future, but I really didn't know who I was. Um, I really lost my identity in high school because sports was taken away. Um, and so I was able to find myself at West Valley and kind of just rebuild myself. Um, I went to West Valley for two years. I graduated there with two AA degrees. Um, and I was also the trustee award for 
recipient when I graduated, so I spoke at graduation, which was terrifying. <laughs> but um, it was a good experience. Uh, there was a guidance counselor there who I had to convince I would graduate in two years because most students at West Valley don't graduate um, within two years. It's more like three years. Um, and I was like, yeah, so I was like, I'm, I'm getting out. I don't care what you say. Um, and my first semester, I got all A's. And she's like, oh, this girl can do it. Um, and so once I proved myself to this guidance counselor, she did everything she could to get me into the classes I needed to get into because she knew I was determined to get out. Um, so I'm very, very thankful for her. And so from then on, I went, I applied to a couple more schools. So I was done with West Valley, and I ended up at San Jose State, <laughs> um, which is hilarious because I always told myself I would never go to West Valley or San Jose State. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, I'm a child and adolescent development major at San Jose State, um, so I still want to work with kids, and I will be graduating in May, so I'm super excited about that. Um, but I'm also applying to master's programs now. So I understand the anxiety of applying to four-year colleges and even West Valley. Um, hitting that submit button is really hard sometimes. Um, but in the end, it's all worth it. And um, for me, having my parents by my side was really, really helpful. Um, there was times where I'd be filling out the application and my dad's like, there's something wrong there. There's nothing wrong, Dad, but it's like after multiple applications, it's like your name's spelled wrong. No. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> so you go through and do it again. So parents, I encourage you to be with your kids. I know I got really frustrated with my parents a lot of the time just because it's so stressful. Um, but having a parent sit next to you while you're doing the application is really helpful. Having them look over your essay that you have to submit with your application is also very helpful because sometimes you just your brain just blanks out. You have no idea what to say about yourself that makes yourself feel like stand out. Um, and so having my parents around was really helpful. Um, but in general, just uh, one thing that I really want to emphasis is going to West Valley, like um, a couple of us did, isn't a bad thing. I know with Las Gatas, there was a big negative stigma of graduating West or graduating Las Gatas and going to West Valley. But honestly, if you even remotely don't know what you want to do or just need to find yourself, it's a great place to do that. Um, there's lots of encouraging teachers, lots of different classes you can take, and honestly, it's a cheaper route. Um, everyone has to take general ed classes, and so if you get them done at West Valley in two years, then you're saving yourself and your parents a lot of money, um, and also a lot of frustration, um, because it's a smaller school where you can kind of talk to teachers and um, just one thing, get involved. If you don't connect with a club or something, college is gonna be really hard. Um, so find a group that you somehow connect with, even if, if it's the chess club, or the knitting club, or the book club, some club or sport, um, it'll make a difference in your college experience. Give Spencer a warm welcome.
was with some jarred man. I took a look at my life and I decided that wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, I was going to one of these um, independent study high schools, which is where you go when you get expelled from, from high school. And uh, I, I failed my first semester there. I just couldn't do it. It was one hour once a week. <laughs> I just had to show up with like some worksheets filled out and you were good. And I couldn't do it, you know. And what I, what I realized was um, if I could get back into that high school and I could, if I could do that work, you know, I could really, I could do it. And, uh, and so I went back and I told them that. I said, you know, I could do this. You know, give me another chance. And they said, absolutely not. <laughs> you are not coming back here whatsoever. Um, and I tried and I tried and I tried, you know. And it got to the point where there was literally begging. And, uh, and they, they gave me the, most, the smallest sliver of chance. All right? They basically said, okay, you're going to sign this contract of what you're going to wear to school. You're going to maintain an A average or a B average or whatever. You're going to do this, that, and the other. And I said, anything will prove to you that I can do this. And, uh, you know, I had the support of my family behind me. Uh, they saw something turn around, and uh, and they gave me a go, you know. And I went back to, to high school, and I sat in front of the class, and I just I just did my best, you know. And I, I've heard that said tonight, and I think that's, like, a really important thing. Like, doing your best means different things to different people. Uh, but if I can lay my head on the pillow at night and know that, like, I actually did my best, whatever that means, whatever that means to my parents, to my teacher, to whatever, if I can lay my head on my pillow at night and know that I did my best myself, that's what matters to me, right? And so I put myself to that test and that's what I did. And uh, I ended up like, I was not passing any classes. I was horrible at math. Definitely failed the first math class in high school. And uh, and so basically I was just I was doing my best in front of the class and I was able to get straight A's. I was able to, uh, I, was, I was elected student body president, which was kind of cool. So I had this college uh, guidance counselor person who said, um, yeah, you're not going to college with this, you know? And um, I had visited my older brother who went to UC Santa Cruz. And I visited him just very briefly. And I just loved the campus there. And I didn't have an idea of what I was going to study or what I wanted to do with my life. I was just like, I latched onto that for some reason. And I said, yeah, I'm going to go there, you know? And uh, they were like, that's not possible. It's just, statistically impossible for you with your SAT scores to get into like that college. Like maybe you should try, you know, this, that, or the other. And um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if they mistaked something or something. <laughs> I didn't cheat, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but I was accepted at UC Santa Cruz and I went, you know, and I had I was like, I was ready to to study psychology and double major in English. I was gonna be a I was going to be a teacher because of so many of the teachers put up with me, and then I was going to be like a psychologist, and I was going to help kids that were like wayward youth. And um, into my first year, I was taking psych, and I just hated it. Like I really did, and I was just so lost. And I was like, "Dude, what do I do?" You know. And um, so I like kind of looked back at like one of the classes that I was kind of good at in high school, and it was like an economics class. So I'm like, "I'll take an economics class." And uh, so I ended up with a. Uh, a degree in business management and economics with an emphasis in accounting. Um, <laughs> and uh, one of the things that happened is I was in one of these accounting classes and uh, an, an accounting firm came in to present. Um, and they said, you know, if you are the top of this and the top of that, and you do this, that, and the other, you can get a job here. You know, you get a job here right out of college. And I was like, I wonder if they'll hire the guy with a ponytail. You know, like, I really wonder if they will. And so I gave it to myself as a challenge. And um, they did hire the guy with the ponytail. Um, I had a secure job for after college. And um, I went to go work for one of the, the, the biggest accounting firms, was PricewaterhouseCoopers, a nice big building downtown. And um, they did tell me to cut my hair. I will tell you that. So I cut my hair, they gave me the job, I grew up. <laughs> And I worked there for a couple years, and it was, it was absolutely like a crazy, wonderful experience of 100-hour weeks and insanity and this, that, and the other. And I proved to myself that I could do it, and I was over it. And so um, one of the things I was doing is I was an auditor in the venture capital practice. So I was like, how about venture capital? Let me try that out. And so I, you know, I went out there in the world to try to get a job at a venture firm, and I did. I went and worked there for a couple years, and that was... Uh, 
just a super awesome experience being like the mix of all that and all this craziness and like still have the ponytails and still hired me. <laughs> so we'll take a good care. Um, and, and really throughout the whole process, like it was just a matter of uh, you know, me, me trying my hardest to be doing my best, you know, and it didn't matter what um, what the struggles were, you know, as long as I, I did my best, I was okay. Like, and, and this is like the 10 minute highlight version, right? There were tons of failures all in there, right? And all of them like just spurred me to, to challenge myself to the next thing, you know? And uh, at some point I decided I didn't want to be an accountant in venture capital anymore and I wanted to save the world and why am I doing, you know, all this? And so I quit my job and went to work at like a nonprofit focusing on homeless advocacy. And, um, and I worked there for like a year. It was awesome. You know, I was working in direct services with uh, homeless men and women in San Jose. Uh, I'm sure you guys all knew about the jungle. I was literally in the jungle helping those guys find jobs, you know, and uh, I was super swell. My girlfriend decided she wanted to go back to college and I needed to pay for it. So I uh, found myself a position back in venture capital. That's where I am now. And, uh, and upon quitting that job, they nominated me to the board of directors. So now I sit on the board of directors. It's the only time I've ever gotten a promotion upon like my two-week notice. So, <laughs> um, I mean, really, when it all comes down to it, it's like I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow with my life, but I'm just going to keep doing it. You know, and it's worked out for me. And uh, there are people. I was I actually posted something on Facebook, like Facebook, about like going to speak at this thing tonight, having no idea what I'm going to say, and like didn't really think about it that much. And my high school history teacher commented on it. <laughs> he said, kind of like how you prepared for school in high school. <laughs> and, uh, he's friends with me on Facebook, which says something. Uh, but a lot of what you know, allowed me to do what it was was the support of people like the teachers in my life, and people like the parents in my life. And, and all along the way, there were like the guidance counselors that said, you can't do that shit, you know? And there were the people who really believed in me. Uh, there was the, the vice principal of my high school, and they let me back in, I'll finish with this. Uh, he gave me a chance. You know, he gave me a chance when no one else would. You know, and when they were saying, no, dude, like this guy has messed up all kinds of stuff, um, you know, they took a chance on me, you know, and it was people like that that were able to believe in people like us that allowed us to be possible, you know, and um, the fact that I'm in finance when I failed, like, my first math class I ever take is amazing. You know, I built spreadsheets that have, like, 30 tabs and, like, complex regression analysis, and, um, and I was just a high school dropout, you know? So, that, that's what it is. I don't know. Thank you.